my family says I'm one of the smartest kids around. I can show you how I feel by moving my face and my eyes. And if you talk to me, I'll talk back. Let me show you. Okay, he's amazing. This mm -hmm. is Pediatric Hal. He's one of the most simulated five-year-olds in the world and is made right here in Florida. This lifelike boy is also getting results for nurses, doctors, first responders with advanced medical training. Joining us now, Jim Arcado from GoMart Scientific and the makers of these simulators. Welcome. Thank you. And you've brought along Pediatric Hal right. with us yes. as well as Super Tori. Right. And so we were all saying during the commercial, we've got to focus. I mean, this <laughs> is fascinating. It is. And so tell us a little bit about Pediatric Hal. I know he was talking to us and he he's, he's reacting right now. I've never <laughs> been on a three shot with a robot. <laughs> he is. And the reason he does that, and the reason you see how realistic these are, mm -hmm. is because nurses and pediatricians and first responders need to get information from these patients. Yeah. And the problem is they're nonverbal most of the time. Right. Certainly the baby's nonverbal. And five year olds in a stressful situation can be nonverbal as well. So the first responders need to get information very quickly. And how can they do it? By facial expressions, by mm -hmm. movement, by tears. So he can simulate pain, he can cry, and he can move his face, as you can see, yeah. how he's tracking towards us. Because they need to get that information very quickly and non-verbally. So working with pediatricians, we were able to configure his face mm -hmm. to respond just the way you see him responding to you now. Yeah, and if we say his name, Hal. Hello. <laughs> oh, he's ignoring me, he but is. I'm used to it. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> that's, that's You're doing okay? Just yeah, we're okay. It's okay. Here you go. <laughs> and he does talk a little. He does, yeah. So Where's what, Dad? I'm oh, right here, well, there you go. Right Where's here. Dad? It's okay. It's okay. Dad's right there. <laughs> I mean, and when you see us so excited about some about Hal, you seem so so proud of the work you guys do. Right. What's that feeling now seeing seeing them actually come to life practically? Right. It, it, it is amazing, and and we always look at these as educational models because what we're doing with these simulators is ensuring that the next generation of nurses, physicians, first responders are really prepared for those critical situations. And that's why we're so proud of this work because we know that folks can train on these before they ever get to a real patient. So they can perform real medical procedures on these simulators using real equipment, a real EKG. If he has a heart attack here today, we can defibrillate him with a real AED that's out in your lobby. What? And, bring and you him even back. have a whole family of them even giving birth to we them. We do. That's right. Yes. Explain that. Mm -hmm. So we have an adult female, Victoria, who actually delivers a baby. And it's extremely realistic because, again, we look at mm -hmm. these high pressure situations where nurses and physicians really need to be very well trained mm -hmm. yeah. before they get to a mm -hmm. situation with a real patient. So that's why these are so important. And, and you're right, that's why we are so proud of them. And the baby just, just twitched. <laughs> and so first off, how do they work? I mean, in the most layman terms for us. Sure, well you can see that I have this tablet in front of me. So these are wireless and tetherless. They're only connected via radio frequency. And the reason for that is emergencies don't always happen in hospitals, they happen mm -hmm. wherever. So we need to be able to control these simulators from this tablet remotely. So that's the first, is this wireless communication okay. that we have. The second is the servo motors and the pneumatics and hydraulics that are inside. So as you described in the introduction, it is a robot, it's a medical robot. And inside, if we were to take these very realistic skins off, that's what you would see are these electromechanical components and the software and hardware that controls all of that. And you're right, we do develop all of that in Miami, Florida. That's and amazing. so we have the uh, American Academy mm -hmm. of Pediatricians mm -hmm. meeting Correct. this weekend here mm -hmm. in Orlando, big conference for them. Right. How do these robots you know, play a role in uh, that convention and, and what's the next frontier? Because <laughs> that's always what you see at these right. types yeah. of events. Yeah. So we are here today because of the American Academy of Pediatrics, and we work very closely with that organization. You can see how realistic these simulators are, and that's based on input for those pediatrici from those pediatricians to ensure that they're getting the right training that they need. What's the next step? Well, technology continues to advance. So five years ago, even we couldn't have envisioned something like this mm -hmm. because uh, we look at not only the technology of making it small, but remember, these are in hospitals or firehouses or the simulators we make for the military on a battlefield. So they need to be reliable and working 
all the time. That technology just didn't exist a few years ago. So how is technology going to advance? Don't know, smaller, faster, more yeah. reliable. I'd envision all of those things coming in the future. And I mean, the, I'm sure the reaction of people when they first see these, even medical professionals, I mean, they just have to be blown away by this. Yeah, it's stunning. Yeah, especially folks who may have been in practice for several years, yes. and they may have trained on an old CPR dummy, as it the used Annie, to be called. Annie, are you okay? Right, yeah. right. And now they see something this realistic and engaged, just as you've been engaging yes. with him this morning. Because that scenario, we want to ensure that the learners are engaged with their patient and gaining that connection with their patient. And we can do that with him and the learners can as well. You can even make him cry. Sure. Well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to make him cry. Okay. No, no, don't make him cry. Right. You've heard him speak, so. He can even yes. bleed, so. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that either. Yeah, we're <laughs> we have a rule, no bleeding on the set. No bleeding, no today. crying. Julie is in love. Clean that up. up. Well, thank you so much for being Our here. Pleasure. Thank pleasure. you for bringing them. You're welcome. They're such yes. great. Mm -hmm. Such well-behaved children. <laughs> I know, well the best children we've had in here in a while, <laughs> including my own. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our pleasure.